Warning, this video is going to be very technical. If you're used to my normal daily shenanigans, sorry, this week is gonna be different. Come back next week and it'll be more of my shenanigans. Jer Eliante pulling up feeling like Harry Belafonte. Look at my racks, feel like Serena went from the back. Swing, pull like Jim, waves on swim, and a rock tins with the tech. Butterfly doors on the Tesla, I just spend shit on gas. Creators, calling all creators. It is 2022. Get off of external hard drives. These things, are you still storing and backing up off of these things? Are you tired of zipping and unzipping files from Google Drive? Do you need to attach these typically to your laptop to grab that one piece of footage just for it to take ages to download? You need to build a NAS. All right, so what is a NAS? It's short for Network Attached Storage. Think of it like a personal Google Drive, but for your home. You are literally building your own server. You know those data centers that companies like Amazon, Microsoft, and Google use for the cloud? Well, think about it like those data centers, but just scale down by a ton. It's for your home. Why is this important? Here's a personal example that I'm sure you can empathize with that happened to me this past month. So I just finished a project. I just came back from my European tour and I had over one terabyte worth of footage. Now, right before I left, I was actually trying to grab some more footage, but my hard drive, I had I used to have this 12 terabyte hard drive, similar to these, but just bigger. I used to store everything on there and it froze on me. I got really, really scared. All throughout the Europe trip, I was thinking about it. I was like, F. Like, am I, did I just lose like seven terabytes worth of data because half of it was full? I'm like, did I lose all of that data from 2021 to 2022? And I came back home and it still wasn't working. And I was panicking, I was freaking out. I was like, there's no way I just lost this much data. Thankfully, I didn't. I just restarted my computer and it worked. Yeah, classic. But I never wanted that fear of losing data ever again. So this happened to me so many times throughout the years and I got really tired of it. I got tired of that fear that I would lose all of my data in a moment's notice. So I pulled the trigger on investing into a NAS. So I had a few goals for this project. I wanted to be able to connect to my NAS to grab footage anytime and anywhere. I wanted to have enough storage to last me for years. I wanted to build this once and not touch it again for years as well. I also wanted to get rid of all of my cloud subscriptions for data, things like Dropbox, Google Drive, and I also wanted to be able to send my clients files and things like that because I, I use that feature all the time. So there are two ways that I could have approached this. The first way is that I could have got a pre-built system. So typically you can buy these from companies like QNAP or Synology and they're great. The pros are that it's easy to use. You really just need to slide in the hard drives that you buy and you're good. Uh, expansion modules are available so you can get like an eight bay system or even get, I think they have the four bay extension so you can get up to 12. And they already have software built in so it's really just plug and play. Cons are that it can typically be more expensive. You're not going to get the most performance out of it. You can't expand beyond what's given. So the specs you have are the specs you have and you can't upgrade any parts in the future as well. So there's no expandability. You can't add more hard drives beyond the 12. And if you want to upgrade the CPU, add some more RAM, good luck. You, you, you can't, you just can't. So the other option is to do a DIY or build your own NAS. So the pros of this, you, you have that expandability. You have the ability to grow with your system. So if you want to add some more RAM, get some more SSDs and things like that to help speed up performance, you can. You can add as many hard drives as you want, given your case can fit it all. And typically prices are going to be great since you control all the parts that go in. Cons, you definitely need to be more technical. So you need to understand how to build a PC. You need to have a learn first mentality. You're not going to know what's going on right away. So you need to be open to learning new software, researching which software to use and researching also what's needed to make sure your NAS is at its best performance. Some overall pros for either way you go, you're gonna pretty much cancel all your subscriptions, which is phenomenal, things like Google Drive and Dropbox. And two, you're gonna have redundancy of data at all times. If a hard drive fails, which they happen, I almost, like one of my drives failed one time, I think, you're able to replace it rather quickly and it'll rebuild what was lost, which is what's amazing about a NAS. One tip for either system that I highly recommend, make sure to grab a 10 gigabit network card. And if you have a laptop, make sure to grab a 10 gig network adapter. This is the number one you can get. I highly recommend getting that just to make sure you have the most optimal speeds. I do this when I have like large projects, like 200, 300 gig projects that I need to quickly put into the NAS and then I can get, get back to creating. All right, so what did I do? I pretty much did a DIY solution. This is because I am 100% just more technical. From tech, I come from a data engineering background, so I've worked with large amount of data sets and servers and stuff in the past. So I, I had a 
pretty good understanding of what it meant to build your own server. I've also built PCs in the past, so I just have that knowledge. So I had an old PC case and motherboard lying around, so that made building this easier as well. Only need to buy RAM, CPU, power supply, the fans, the SATA network card, which were expected, and these are the, ex the exact specs that I use, actually. So pause if you want to see exactly what I got. But how did it go? high key such a pain in the ass. So this is mainly because my case wasn't built to be a NAS. So I had to do a ton of just DIY work to make sure I could fit as many hard drives in here as possible in the safest and most logical way. I just needed the space. So I had to add drive mounts and then also tear apart some of the case, which is kind of sad. Sorry, main gear. So it was really tough to build, but the results are out of this world. I now have a total of 100 terabytes of redundant storage that I can use with either Wi-Fi or Ethernet. And with Ethernet, I can get about 500 megabytes per second speeds, which is phenomenal. Like that is absurd. I can connect anywhere in my house to the NAS with Wi-Fi as well, and I get really good speeds. I can quickly grab a, a video clip, you know, take like a minute or two. And I actually did this for this video to grab some clips from my Europe trip because I already put it on here, which is so convenient. I'm able to speed up my workflow and make sure that I can create videos more quickly and more easily. Like, look at this thing. This thing's crazy. It's my own working NAS. That's insane. Look at this thing. Ah so cool. But do I recommend for you to build your own? Do I recommend for you to go through the DIY option? Honestly, no. There are just way too many hurdles that I myself and that you would need to jump through. You need to know how to build computers. You need to know which cases are built for NAS and do research on those cases. And there honestly aren't that many cases. You need to know which parts work for which, which goes into PC building. Are you going to pick an AMD CPU? Are you going to pick, you know, do you need a GPU? Do you need things like so many factors? You need to know how to manage heat and thermals. That was one of my biggest problems. I My hard drives were overheating and I just didn't know how to properly thermal manage everything. So I had to get some more fans and like zip tie things. It's crazy. You also need to know which software to use and which one's gonna match your needs the best. Like I think the main two are Unraid and TrueNAS. I went with Unraid, but there's just differences between the two and how they work. And one uses this thing called ZFS. It, just, it gets complicated. It's very technical. But also mine is freaking big as hell. Look at how huge this thing is. It is absolutely outlandish and uh, it's just too much. It's too much. I think I spent over two weeks trying to build out this system. You know, I was ordering new parts, making sure things work together, trying to figure out which system would work and figuring out network speeds and how I can make the speeds faster so I can transfer all my data faster. And then took over like so much of my headspace this entire month of October. That's actually why I didn't actually post that much this month because I was focusing on building this. It just took up that much mental space where I was thinking about it every single day. And also by the end of it, honestly, I think I spent like the same amount as I would if I just bought a pre-built. I didn't even gain cost savings, which is <laughs> So if you're a creator, like a content creator first, you are most likely not focused on the technicalities as much as I would. Even for me as someone who is technical, it became too much even for myself. You, the content creator, you want the benefits of a NAS with the least amount of work because you and myself, we want to focus on creating. Because of that, for any young creator, I highly recommend recommend just buying a pre-built NAS and just using all of that for your storage needs. It'll do everything that mine can do. It'll be more smaller and more portable when you're most likely to move. As we're young, we move around a lot. And you as well will have lightning fast speeds with both Wi-Fi and Ethernet. But yes, honestly, I still love my NAS though. To me, it looks so badass. Like, look at this thing. <laughs> but knowing that I could have done something simpler with less of a headache does kind of sting a little bit. But it's all learning experience, so. Good. But yeah, I just saw so many young content creators, especially my age, edit off of hard drives still. Like on the go and at like coffee shops and they're they're traveling around with it like in their backpacks and stuff. And it hurt my heart to see that. Cause like like bro, if you drop that thing, like you're dropping your backpack wrong or 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 if it like falls off a table at a cafe, falls off the couch while you're working editing, like GG bro, you're done. Like good like dude everything on here, it'll be gone. Like, good luck, bro. Like, it'll definitely be gone. All that data from all the years that you've worked on all your videos, it'll just be gone. So if you are a young creator right now, please, 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 please get a NAS. You won't regret it. There are just so many benefits like I listed before. It just makes your workflow when you're creating videos that much easier and that much simpler. You will not regret it. 
I promise you. Whether it be doing a DIY or just or just like buying one off of like Newegg or B&H for Amazon, please just get one. It will change your life, I promise, and the way you make your videos. Woo. But yeah, this was definitely more of a technical video. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Next week, we'll be back to our regularly scheduled programming, which is my life. But yeah, catch you guys in the next one. Peace, y'all. Get a Nas. If you're a creator, get a Nas. Here's a personal example. I'm sure you can empathize. Empathize. <laughs>